So this week's painting is a little more detailed. I wanted to try and push myself out of my comfort zone a little bit and I am attempting to paint this lovely pair of gannets. They're sitting on a cliff top overlooking the sea, enjoying the sunshine. Uh, the reference photo for this came from Rosie Dutton Photography. I'll leave her details in the description box below. Um, Rosie is a, a fantastic wildlife photographer and she also has a YouTube channel along with her YouTube co-star Tom. Uh, the channel's called Intit Wild, if anyone's interested, I'll try and link that as well. Um, it is lovely. If you're interested in, in nature and wildlife, it's fantastic. And there is an episode in particular that's relevant to this, where they visit Bempton Cliffs. Uh, these gannets themselves are from the East Yorkshire coast, so that's what we're painting today. Some Bempton gannets overlooking the East Yorkshire coastline. I will leave in the description box below, oh, there's a lot of stuff going in this description box. I'm going to leave the paints that I'm going to use down there so you can see what colours I'll be using um, as well as the other equipment. And I'm starting out just as normal with using a large brush and some clean water and I am wetting the background around the outlines of these birds. So I'm starting out by painting in the sea and I'm just using turquoise blue for this and no other colours, just keeping it really simple. I'm using a larger brush than the one I started out with because that was way too small and I'm keeping it darker at the back and getting a little bit lighter as we get closer to the gannets in the front. It doesn't have to be very detailed this part because the sea is really quite far away in the distance and the detail is going to be in the foreground with the grass and with the gannets. You'll see at, so, at some point as well, I do add in some extra dark layers of turquoise just to add a little bit of detail on the waves on the top. Now eventually, I did change my mind about this and decided I liked it better, more simple. So if you want to skip the step, that's fine. Um, I do go over the sea again later on and kind of undo some of these details, so feel free to skip this if you would rather. So for the foreground, I'm using sap green and some burnt umber, just dropping it wet in wet, letting it all mix together because the page is still damp. I'm using a smaller brush as well to drag out some grass details. I'm using both ends of the brush, the brush end and also the opposite end just to scratch in some grass details. Doesn't need to have a lot done to it at the moment because we will go over it again later. So this is just the initial layer. So sometimes it's quite difficult knowing exactly where to start with something like this. I chose to start with the bill, um, the beaks of these two gannets, just because it gave me somewhere to begin and then the rest didn't seem as daunting after that. So I'm starting out just by wetting the bill and then I'm going to add in some colour into that and the colours that I'll use will be cobalt blue, alizarin crimson and Payne's grey in different mixtures starting out with a really watered down version and then darkening it up uh, to add some shadow details and I do the same for both of these birds so you'll see that repeated
I'm using some watered down turquoise just to put in a really simple eye at this stage and then we'll add some pupil details in there later. So while this area is drying, I'm going to move on to the rest of the head. Um, I'm using clean water again just to wet all the way down the neck. This is further than I'm intending to paint, but that means that the paint's got somewhere to spread and it's not going to end in just a really harsh line. Uh, we're going to do the golden cream crown of these gannets. So to do that, I'm starting mainly with yellow ochre. I'm also going to add in some cadmium yellow, burnt sienna and burnt umber in different mixtures. Just dropping them in um, and seeing what happens, trying to let the paint do the work. Uh, and this is quite a nice fun bit, so um, yeah, just enjoy it. I'm using the same brush just to lift some areas. The top of the heads of these birds are pretty pale white so I'm just trying to preserve some of those highlights by lifting that colour out. So while the neck's still wet, I'm just adding in some shadow details. I'm making this out of a mixture of uh, crimson, some cobalt blue, Payne's grey, um, and adjusting the, the red or the blue depending on what I'm seeing in the shadow. And while this area is still wet, I'm dropping in some Payne's grey because I know it's going to soften out. Um, while that paper is still damp underneath. I think there's a little bit of burnt umber in there as well, just so it's not too harsh. I'm then gonna add in the Payne's grey details around the bill and outline all those beak details. Um, I'm gonna use some more shadow on the bill as well, just to make different areas stand out. And that shadow color is similar to what we've used before. So crimson, a bit of blue, a bit of Payne's grey, just making it darker than the tone underneath so that it stands out as a shadow. Using that same shadow tone for the eye, um, I'm going to outline the pupil and then just drop in some um, darker Payne's grey over the top of that. And then the great thing about painting two of these is we can do the exact same thing on the other side, just repeating the exact same process and ta-da! 
So while we're leaving um, the area around the faces to dry, we can move on to the rest of the body. So I'm going to do one at a time and that way I'm not trying to rush around doing too much at once. Um, and I'm starting first by just wetting the body of the gannet with some clean water and then I'm going to add in some shadow details. So these are, are quite important bits because the gannet is is pretty much white so the only way you can see any detail on this is by looking at the shadows uh, we're going to start out with yellow ochre and burnt sienna so a nice bright shadow detail adding in some more crimson for some red shadows some um, burnt umber for some of the darker areas and also some cobalt blue to make a nice purpley shadow um, just experimenting with different mixes of paint and uh, seeing what we come up with dropping them all in wet and wet so they blend nicely to Together. and because this is all damp it will dry um, a little lighter than this as well so we'll be able to go over and darken that as we need to a bit later on To this is trying to use as few brush strokes as you can so you don't overwork an area so I'm just dropping in paint here there and everywhere without trying to blend too much or do too much work with the paintbrush but letting the water do all that for you and kind of mix it together um, with very little effort so I'm just using a damp paper towel here to blend out some of these shadows and just soften those hard edges a little And now some really simple tail feather details just with Payne's Grey, um, as few lines as possible just adding in a little bit of contrast underneath those lighter feathers. So once the painting underneath is um, fairly dry. I'm going in again with some darker shadows with more burnt umber for the brown shadows, more cobalt blue and Payne's grey for some of those darker bluey purple areas.
So for the foreground, I am using clean water just to wet the whole area before I start adding in paint. This is a part of the painting where you can um, have quite a bit of fun with it and just add loads of colour. Where you've got to be more refined with the gannets themselves, this foreground is just for having fun and experiment with it using different techniques. For this, I have added some more sap green, some burnt umber, Payne's grey, I have used salt for texture, I have dragged out some grass details with a smaller paintbrush, um, I have splattered paint on there, so a bit of all sorts. Just make it really textured and interesting because it's right in the foreground so it's going to catch people's attention. Okay, so we've reached the part of the painting where I really wasn't keen on the pattern of the sea in the background. I felt like it was a bit too detailed and it was detracting away um, from the gannets in the foreground. I did plan to go over this with extra paint, but I started out simply by using some clean water just to go over it again so I could do some wet in wet painting. And I found that just doing that and going backwards and forwards with that clean water really um, smoothed out a lot of the issues so I didn't actually need to add any paint on top of that I just went over with clean water and it evened it out really nicely for me and I'm pretty happy with what that ended up looking like So I've reached the part now where I'm just refining this a little bit and adding in some details and some finishing touches. I'm using white gouache for some highlights in the eye and then also to highlight some areas of the feathers and to bring out some of that uh, sparkle. Once I've finished with the gouache, I'm going to go over some of the shadows again just to um, add a bit more contrast and add a tiny little bit more detail. Don't want to overwork it at this stage, I want to still keep it nice and loose and simple. Um, but yeah, just refine it a little bit in this stage.
So this is the part of the painting where I really am just refining it. I wanted to um, go over the sea again, so I'm adding some extra clean water here and I am dropping in a little bit of turquoise to this as well, just to even it out a little bit and knock it back into the background. And while I'm at it, I am going to add some more burnt umber splats in the foreground. Um, just because it's fun and I'm covering up the birds so I don't ruin the rest of the painting because this really is the last few touches now. So at this point I am pretty happy with it and the painting is almost done. Um, the only thing that I wanted to try and change is there is a little splodge you might notice on the left hand side of the painting just behind that gannet's head. Um, this is where I dropped my phone onto the paper before I started. It made a dent and it has collected paint in it ever since. I think it looks a little bit like a bird in flight, so I've decided that's what it's going to be. So as Bob Ross would say, it is just a happy little accident and now we have a flying bird in the background. Could be another gannet, you never know. To even it out, I'm going to add some more birds on the opposite side. And then we are going to be pretty much done. And here it is all finished. I'm just going to remove the masking tape and then we're done. Um, thank you so much for watching. I will be back again next Wednesday with another video.